Welcome. This is the video that uh, complements the assembly manual with the Rock Island Freight House. Uh, we use this video to show you the uh, products and the techniques that we use to paint the structure. Uh, throughout the assembly manual there are uh, references to this video. Well, we recommend uh, at what point you uh, paint certain pieces and in this video we will show you the products and the techniques that we use to do that. So here's our roof with the uh, roof supports installed and the LED light strip applied. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, what we want to do is we wanted to paint the uh, top of the roof uh, a charcoal gray. And the reason we wanted to do that is because the, uh, the gravel treatment we have uh, with the kit, there's uh, 8 ounces of uh, real fine gravel. And we're going to glue that gravel to this roof really is the, the last step in the building process. But what we wanted to do was get this dark gray uh, roof color down so that when you put the gravel on you don't have that MDF showing through you have this dark gray and so Really no treatment is required for this roof um, Even these tabs that are showing through those won't even be uh, those won't even be present once the uh, gravel roof is applied Just wanted to show you that uh, We want to paint this roof gray. You can even paint it flat black it doesn't matter um, Just trying to keep the uh, number of colors down for you so you're not, uh, you're not spending a mint on, uh, on colors and paint. Um, so just a dark gray on the top of the roof surface, and that's all there is. Before we glue the supports to the warehouse floor, we need to first determine what we want. Do we want a wooden floor, or do we want a concrete floor? If you're looking to have a wooden floor, you're going to want to glue the supports to the uh, opposite side of the uh, floor that has the engraving in it, which would be here. No engraving. This is where the uh, supports will get glued on this side if you want a wooden floor in your warehouse. If you want a concrete floor, then you're definitely going to want to glue these supports to the uh, side that has the engraving. Uh, we're going to go ahead and paint both sides of the floor so that you can see what it looks like, and then we'll move on to the next step. So here we have our dock floor, and if you notice, this is the side that has the engraving in it to look like uh, wood planking. Um, we went and painted this uh, just a dark brown, and uh, then I applied a uh, coat of what's called uh, matte clear enamel, which is basically just a flat coat that tones down the, uh, the glossy paint, makes it a little bit flatter. And the reason we did that is because that works really well for dry brushing. So what I'm going to show you next is how to dry brush. And this is just a technique that we use in the model making industry to uh, give some depth and texture to an otherwise flat surface. So we'll get started with that here in just a second. So the secret to dry brushing is that you start with a darker color and then you work up with your uh, progressively lighter colors. So what we've got is we've got some craft paints that we've, uh, that we've picked up at the craft store. And these are just uh, acrylics. Um, they come in a small bottle, just like this. Um, they are very inexpensive, and you get two ounces of, uh, of uh, fluid, or uh, of paint rather. And uh, it's really, really simple. So let me show you the trick to it. First is the paint. And like I said, I use these uh, I use these acrylic craft paints because they uh, they they tend to go further when you're dry brushing. They don't dry up as quickly. They don't they don't leave a glossy surface. They leave a matte uh, finish, and uh, they look really good. Um, so the next thing you need to choose is your brush. So I've got two brushes here. One that is just a uh, a one inch uh, paint brush that uh, you can buy at your uh, local DIY store. And the other one I have is an artist brush. Um, and really what you're looking for is a, is a wider brush, uh, width-wise, that has uh, bristles that are, I'd say, um, say medium. Uh, you, you know, you've got, you've got some bristles that are very, very soft for applying powders. Uh, this is more of a, a medium tension. And then you have ones that are very hard that are used for uh, stippling. Um, this is just a, a medium... Uh, medium density I don't know what you really want to call it but it's just it feels good on the on the fingers for dry brushing and it's uh, medium resistance 
And uh, the next thing you need for dry brushing is you just need a, a clean, clean towel, clean rag. And the, uh, the technique is really simple. You just apply paint to the brush and then you wipe most of it off. You want to swirl that brush around while you're doing it. And the goal is to have just a tiny bit of paint on the bristles. So that looks pretty good. So now what we'll do is we'll just take our, our piece and we'll start with a swirling pattern. And you'll notice that I started with the uh, darker of the four colors first. And I just swirl this around. I'm not going to do the whole piece. This is just to, uh, to demonstrate to you how to dry brush. So just swirl this around. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it does, it does start to lighten the surface just a little bit. So then we'll go into the milk chocolate color. Do the same thing. Swirl it around. The goal here is not to have any type of pattern. It's just all random. And what it'll do is it will create depth and interest in the surface itself. So now we'll go into the, uh, the sable brown. The lighter colors you want to, as you go progressively lighter, you want to make sure that uh, it's not too heavy because it will ultimately drown it out. So we're going to go in lightly with this. Now you start to see there's a random pattern to this, and that's good. We'll go in with the cocoa, which is a, a fourth color. Typically, when I dry brush, I stick to three colors, but because this is such a dark brown color, we want to try and uh, bring it to life a little bit. So now we're just going to go lightly this way. And you can go with the green too, doesn't matter. And that's basically dry brush in a nutshell. So if you, if you look at this closer, you can see how we started with our dark surface and we have several different shades of uh, progressively lighter colors. And that just gives interest to that dock floor. So when it's inside the building and you look in the door with the lights on, you don't see just a drab brown surface. You see something that appears to have texture to it and depth. And that's just a process called dry brushing. And it's something that we're going to use a lot of in the construction and painting method of this uh, Rock Island Freight House. So as we progress in the build, we'll uh, cover the colors that we are using. Once again, these are just acrylic craft paints that are available at any craft store. Um, I think they sell for like a dollar and a half, two dollars per bottle. It's two fluid ounces. Um, great paint, um, very durable, has a matte finish, and uh, works fantastic for dry brushing. So that's dry brushing in a nutshell, and we'll be using more of it as we progress on this Rock Island Freight House. Okay, so we've got the uh, four floor supports mounted to the underside of the dock floor. Uh, again, just use some super glue and kicker to speed up the process for the sake of the video. You can use wood, goo wood glue if you want, or you can use super glue and kicker, totally your choice. So now what we need to do is we need to prepare the, uh, the dock floor. And what I mean by preparing it is we're just going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So uh, I've got three colors that I selected. Uh, once again, these are just the, uh, just the acrylic craft paints that you pick up at the craft store. Uh, the three colors that I've chosen are, uh, are slate gray, gray sky, and buttermilk. And uh, the reason I chose those is because they're uh, progressively lighter than the uh, dark charcoal floor that we started with. So for this round, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit bigger brush just because I have a larger surface area to cover. I'm going to grab some towels that I can uh, wipe my brush off on for the dry brushing process, which we'll set here. And uh, 
This is the brush I'm using, just a one inch house paint brush. Uh, bristles are somewhat stiff, but uh, still flexible enough to create a nice, uh, nice pattern. So we're just going to grab some of this uh, slate gray paint, wipe it off on our, uh, our towel. Want to make sure that we swirl that brush around quite a bit to get paint up on all the bristles. And then wipe that paint off as best we can. And we just want to create a random pattern. So let's see how that looks. So we're going to start uh, real light right here in the middle. We're just going to kind of swirl this around, making some random patterns on the uh, on that gray. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole floor because this will be in our model as we proceed. And you can pat the brush if you want, more of a stippling action. Just want to create some random patterns on there of a little bit lighter color than the base color. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Now we're going to move over to the slate gray. Take a little bit of that, wipe that off our brush. Now for this lighter color, we're going to want to make sure that we wipe about as much paint off as we can because this will really stand out on that surface. And while we want it to stand out, we also want it to be subtle. Okay, so let's go ahead and just real softly go in with this. And we'll just stipple it around. This really isn't dry brushing per se, this is more of a stippling action, but we just want a random pattern on the surface itself. I'll wipe some more of that paint off. And we'll try a little bit of dry brush and see how that affects it. But as you can see, this starts to bring uh, some depth to this uh, otherwise flat surface. So wipe some paint off and now I'm just kind of swirling the brush around to pick up any light details that may exist in that MDF. And it may not look like much at first, but when it's all said and done, it actually looks really, really good. Okay, so now we're going to go to the buttermilk. And the buttermilk is, uh, it's not gray, it's more of a white. And this one, this color we want to just ever so lightly touch the surface of that uh, of that dock area and this is just going to pull out some highlights that would come from a otherwise uneven concrete floor all right and let's just lightly go through here with this And just ever so lightly touching on the surface. And feel free to experiment as you're going. You know, if you if you if you paint something you're not happy with, just repaint it. Start with the base color and work up again. You'll notice that uh, I've got these little squares in here from where the floor supports are. I'm not even worried about those. Those really won't even show up in the finished model. And if they're there, the other larger surface areas will, will pick it up and hide it. Okay, so it's about all we're going to do for this concrete floor for the interior of the uh, freight station. So again, it's just slate gray 
is the uh, well we start with charcoal gray which is our base color then we go to slate gray as the first dry brush layer gray sky is the uh, second lighter color and then that buttermilk or antique white or even really really light gray totally your choice it's all it's all personal preference but this is just to show you how we uh, how we do it at uh, TW Trainworks and uh, how we uh, are showing you how we painted our model so that yours can match if you if you like the look of ours. Um, so that's dry brushing on the uh, warehouse floor. Um, that's uh, let's uh, move to the uh, let's move to the next step. If you plan to leave the garage doors or the dock doors open on your model, you're going to want to prepare the inside of the interior walls before assembly. And what we mean by that is you basically want to paint a color on the inside of the walls. So for our sample here, we've decided to use a, uh, a pale green, something that you would typically find in a, uh, in a warehouse. So this area here will be covered by the dock floor. and Really only this area here and a little bit up on the top will be seen when the model is actually in position on the layout. So we've used a pale green and we've done this to all four inner walls uh, in the dock area, including the dock office wall. Now you can apply a, a light dry brush to this, although we really don't think it's necessary uh, for the sake of the... Uh, aesthetic of the model when it's in place you really don't need any uh, treatment to the interior walls of the structure just something green to uh, give the illusion that there is some paint inside that warehouse and here are the other three walls uh, that make up the uh, the dock interior so this is the back side of one of the walls, uh, the, trucks, the, the truck wall. We have the uh, dock office, and we just painted a little bit of uh, gray on here to give a little bit of interest. If you're looking through the dock door, you can see something in there. Um, and then there's the back wall. And so this was just, uh, just a light gray that we found. Uh, it is uh, listed in the instruction manual, uh, the exact color that we used. And again, no need to apply any additional treatments to it, no type of dry brush or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to uh, show you what uh, all four of the walls look like, the, in, the interior walls in the dock area. At this point we have our laminate walls attached to our inner, uh, inner walls. Um, all of the brick laminates have been applied. Uh, the roof is uh, is the gray that we painted it earlier. So what we need to do now is we need to mask off this gray uh, on the roof, cover the roof completely, and then also mask all of our windows and openings. And that's so that we can paint the red brick and uh, not get overspray on that interior color we painted earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, um, get that masking done and we'll be back in just a few seconds. As you can see, we've got the interior of the structure masked off with uh, just some painter's tape. And what you want to make sure of is that this tape is real tight up against the uh, interior of the inside wall. Once again, this is so that uh, we don't get overspray on that pale green that we sprayed inside the interior of the structure. Um, at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, apply our red uh, paint to our entire exterior of the structure. Um, one last thing that we need, do need to do is, uh, before we get into that, is to uh, tape off the roof, mask this off so we keep the overspray off that. So now we have our roof taped off, and this again is just to protect that uh, charcoal gray surface from the uh, red that we're going to spray on the bricks. So uh, we're going to uh, go outside and uh, hit this with some uh, red spray paint, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Now that we have the red color on the main structure, there's one more step that we need to do before we take that uh, masking out of the structure and uh, 
move on to the next step. And that is we want to mask along this brick line uh, between the smooth uh, concrete foundation surface and the brick and then of course all of these uh, vertical supports for the garage doors. So let's take a moment and mask that up and then we'll move on to the next step. So at this point what we've done is we've masked off the, uh, the red brick with some masking tape uh, to help us prepare to put the, uh, the dark gray base on this concrete foundation. Uh, what I've also done is I've put this uh, mask on here. This is just some rosin paper I had laying around the shop. You can use newspaper, cardboard, um, really whatever's convenient for you. Wouldn't use anything porous like paper towels. That uh, tends to soak the paint up pretty easily and transfer it to the other side. But uh, any type of paper will work. And again, this is just to prevent any overspray from this dark gray band that we're going to put on the foundation from reaching that red surface that we just painted on the structure. Um, so let's go into the shop. I'll put some paint on here and then we'll move on to uh, dry brushing this foundation uh, so that we can pull the uh, tape off, save a little bit of masking tape from having to do it again and uh, later down the road. But uh, we're going to go ahead and paint this gray. We'll come back and we'll dry brush the foundation. Then we'll pull all of the masking that we have on the structure off and uh, we'll get into putting in the windows. If you chose to make your uh, lintels uh, a concrete color as opposed to red, meaning you didn't put them in, you did not install them on the structure uh, before you painted the whole thing red, uh, you should gather all those parts up now. And so what I've done is I've made a simple tack board out of some uh, scrap cardboard and some masking tape. Just put the tacky side up so that uh, it'll hold the parts. And basically all I have here, I've got all the capstones for the structure. Uh, I have the uh, lintels for the uh, for the smokestack, and I have the lintels for the uh, for the banding around the structure itself. So I've I've uh, put all of these on the tack board, and I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of charcoal gray on these now. So I got that uh, dark gray foundation, so that we can dry brush them. But uh, before we go to the dry brushing, I've got to paint both sides of these parts because uh, they can be seen from the top and from the bottom. So we're going to go out and put a uh, coat of charcoal gray on this. Wait for it to set up, flip them all over, paint the other side, and then we'll come back and dry brush these along with the uh, foundation on the structure, and uh, we'll be able to move into uh, preparing our windows and uh, finishing the structure out. So now we've got our uh, gray, our charcoal gray applied to our foundation. And uh, something I just want to show you real quick, something, a uh, little trick that we do if you notice, the, uh, the brick surface has, has got a real glossy sheen to it. And uh, honestly, the, the charcoal gray has a bit of a glossy sheen to it as well. So one of the things that we do is we apply something called a uh, just matte clear uh, enamel. And basically it's just a, just a dull coat, if you will, that, that brings that gloss down and, uh, and puts a matte surface on the area that we're painting. So as you can see here, we've got, uh, we've got gloss on the brick. I'm going to flip this over. I applied the, uh, the matte clear enamel to the other side, and it's still partially drying on us. But you can see how much that tones down that gloss surface and uh, just makes a, a much, better, much better surface to uh, apply paint and weathering techniques to. So now what we need to do is we want to dry brush our foundation while we still have this masking tape in place. Um, this kit's big and it eats up a lot of masking tape and uh, we want to try and conserve it everywhere we can. So what we're going to do is just do a little dry brush technique on this foundation to, to bring this dark gray into more of a concrete look. So we're going to use the same colors we used earlier on the, uh, on the warehouse floor, the slate gray, the gray sky, and the buttermilk. And same exact technique, nothing changes. We've got our, uh, our flat brush with... Uh, you know, medium resistance uh, bristles on it. We're just going to start with the slate gray and wipe off as much of that paint as you can. It's like we talked about earlier. And then we're just going to lightly start uh, dry brushing the, uh, the concrete foundation. And you can go up and down, you can go in swirls. Um, 
more of a stippling effect, wh whatever is comfortable for you and whatever you think uh, looks best on your model. And again, this is just something to take a flat surface and give it some depth and texture so that it's not just a single color and uh, looking boring. Okay, so we've got our uh, slate gray dry brushed in on the uh, on the base coat. So we're going to go to our next lighter color, which is the uh, gray sky. And uh, just apply a, a light dry brush of that. Again, the whole concept of dry brushing is you start with dark, work your way up to light. Um, the lighter colors, especially when you're in places where you've got raised detail, the lighter colors will really make the details pop. So you so can go in here with some uh, some gray sky. And again, just uh, helping to add depth and texture to an otherwise flat surface. Finally, we can go in with uh, some of this buttermilk and uh, or any really any other kind of light sand colored uh, paint that you like, you know, there's uh, driftwood, uh, bleach sand, anything like that. Just something that has a reminiscent of a sand texture, sand color. And uh, just want to put some of that on here to pull out just a little bit of highlight in the, uh, in the foundation. And then can also uh, whip back and forth so that you catch the edge to put a highlight right there on the on the edge of that concrete. It's always a nice touch. And uh, do that for the whole foundation and we'll be ready to take the masking tape completely off this structure and uh, get the windows in. Uh, I'm sorry, get the vinyl in to uh, get ready to put the windows in and uh, start some of the light weathering uh, processes on the structure itself and uh, get it put together. So at this point, we've taken off all of the masking tape. You can see the uh, pale green that we painted on the interior walls initially, uh, the red that we put on the, uh, the brick surface, the uh, dark gray that we then went through and dry brushed. Uh, I did put a coat of matte clear on here, uh, just matte clear enamel to bring the gloss down quite a bit. Uh, also dry brushed all my uh, lintels. So you can get an idea of what those are going to look like on the structure when, uh, when we get to the final stage of assembly. Um, at this point right now, what we're going to do is go ahead and put the vinyl in, uh, which is the backing for the windows. It's a frosted color so that uh, you can't actually see into the building, but the light will shine through. Uh, we'll do that and uh, we'll come back and show you how to put in the windows and uh, wrap up the... Uh, wrap up the assembly of the structure, then uh, finally the gravel roof, and just some uh, final touch up on the paint, and uh, we'll be done with our structure. So here we have all of our capstones and lintels um, painted. We've painted both sides of, the, uh, of all the parts, uh, sides, top and bottom. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and dry brush these uh, using the same technique that we used on the foundation. And this will just help that, uh, that concrete look really pop on the building. And again, we're just going to use slate gray, gray sky, and buttermilk. Just do a real light dry brush, dry brush of each color. Um, just to pull the depth out of it and give it a little bit of texture. And then we'll move to putting these pieces onto the structure. So what we have here are all the lintels that have been uh, dry brushed. Uh, we started out with a dark gray uh, coat, 
Then we uh, dry brushed with our slate gray, our gray sky, and our buttermilk. Um, all of these components are now ready to assemble to the building. And we're going to go ahead and take all the masking tape off the structure and apply these lintels. Um, then the next step will be applying the uh, vinyl on the inside of the structure. And then ultimately the windows and we'll get into weathering the brick structure itself. So now that our structure is, uh, is all painted and all of our base coats are on, our foundation is dry brushed and the brick is ready for its treatment, uh, we want to go ahead and start with the windows and get these prepared for assembly. So what we've done is we've gone through here and we've picked out all of the scrap pieces that uh, sometimes still remain in the, uh, in the cut sheet. And the reason they remain is they have adhesive on the back of those scrap pieces. So they need to be pulled out. So it's a little bit of a tedious job, but it's well worth the uh, end result. And the reason you want to take those scrap pieces out is so that the paint gets on the inside of all of these uh, panes inside the window on the, on the mullions. And so by uh, taking all those pieces out, we can make sure the paint gets up in there and applies a nice even coat so that uh, you don't have any irregularities uh, that can be seen when the structure is assembled and then illuminated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just go ahead and take some uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint and uh, we're going to paint all these windows. And we're going to do it while it's still in the, uh, in the fret or in the sprue. And so you can see you've got these little pieces here that the sprues we call them that hold the, uh, the windows in place. It's okay if the, if the paint doesn't get on the outside perimeter of the window because it's going to sit inside that window opening and you'll never see it. However, all of these other surfaces uh, will be seen while the uh, window is mounted. So we're going to go ahead and spray that. We'll come back and we'll show you what that looks like uh, once the paint dries up. And then we'll show you how easy it is to put these windows into the, uh, into the structure uh, when we're ready to do that. So in addition to the windows, we also have our garage doors, our front entry door, and then our rear, um, or our rear wall uh, steel panel with the entry door. We want to paint these as well. Now, I'm, what I want to do is I want to keep the uh, door the same color as the windows, but I want the garage doors to be like a deep hunter green. And then same thing on the, uh, on the rear panel uh, wall. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and carefully cut this uh, door out and paint it along with the windows uh, so they're the same color. And then I'll come through and I'll paint this sheet as well. And again, this is just putting the base coat on the, uh, on the items and uh, setting them up so that we can dry brush them or put whatever treatment on them we want. Uh, but it's a lot easier to do this with spray paint than it is to uh, go through and brush this whole thing by hand. So I'm going to go out in the shop and do that now and we'll be right back. So we have our garage doors that, or our dock doors that um, we painted earlier. It was like a spruce green to uh, put this green effect on it. Um, and then we painted the back of them with some flat black just to uh, prevent the light from showing through the, the thin material. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and do a little bit of dry brushing uh, on these doors just to give it some texture. And once again, it's just a method of uh, taking an otherwise flat surface and pulling some detail out of it, giving it a little bit of depth. So. Uh, I've got two acrylic paint colors. I've got a desert cactus and a bleach stand. Uh, I picked these simply because the, the green is a little bit lighter than the spruce green. And the bleach sand uh, just be a way to put some real light uh, highlights on that door. So let's just uh, get started. Just got a little uh, uh, brush here. Um, you know, medium resistance on those bristles. And uh, we'll get started. So do what we always do, dry brushing. Wipe all the paint off the brush. And then on these doors, we want to kind of go up and down um, just because the, the doors themselves in application would be going up and down. So a couple of streaks here and there. Is really the only effect we're looking for there. Spin it around. Yeah. 
and on the one of the bottom panels. So just uh, just a real light effect. Um, do it one more time on another door, maybe a half door. This one here. And notice the bristles are always going the same direction, back and forth uh, in the up and down pattern on the door. Um, you can go side to side if you want, but just the, the fact that these doors would be rolling up and rolling down, keep the, uh, keep the weathering on it the same all the time. Now we're going to go through a little bit of bleach sand. And this one, you want to make sure that you get as much of the paint off the brush as possible. We just want to be very, very light with this, uh, with this light color. Try that. And on this one as well. Nothing too loud, just a real subtle adjustment of the color and uh, put the two side by side you can see how subtle it is um, but ultimately what it'll do is uh, when it's installed in the structure it will uh, it will give a little bit of depth uh, and interest to those doors as opposed to just being a, a stark uh, staunch uh, green color get them over here in the camera view and uh, Go ahead and apply that treatment to all those garage doors. Um, you know, if you have different colored doors and you do different uh, different uh, dry brush colors on each one, um, something to definitely add some interest to the uh, to the garage doors. So the last group of parts that we need to prepare for painting are the uh, canopy roofs. There's two of them, and then the uh, the bumpers for the truck dock. So once again, I've just made a quick tack board with some uh, masking tape upside down to hold the parts in place. Um, I've got our uh, bumpers and I've got our uh, canopy roofs. So I'm going to go ahead and take those out in the shop, put a coat of flat black on them. Um, we do want to make sure that we cover both sides of the, uh, of the canopies, so top and bottom. Uh, and that's uh, just a matter of waiting for the top to dry, flip it over, paint the bottom. Uh, we want to make sure we get the edges and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be ready to go. And this should uh, complete uh, all of the spray painting that we have to do for the freight station and uh, get on to some dry brushing and some light weathering. Now that we have the entire structure painted, uh, all the canopies, the uh, brass rods, etc., it's time to apply the, uh, the gravel treatment to the roof. Um, just going to use some Elmer's uh, white glue and a disposable chip brush to spread the glue around. And uh, it's really quite simple. Just uh, apply a copious amount of glue to the uh, roof surface and spread it around with the uh, with the brush. Now that the glue is evenly applied around the uh, entire perimeter and surface of the roof, it's time to apply the ballast. Um, <clears throat> ballast comes in a bag, and the easiest way to do this is to just dump it all <clears throat> right in the middle of the roof. <clears throat> and then just take the building and uh, rock it back and forth. So you just want to move the structure this way and shake it a little bit. Just shake that, uh, shake that ballast around the entire roof surface. Um, the glue will grab the, uh, the loose stuff on the bottom, or the, the gravel on the bottom, and the loose stuff will just uh, cover the rest of the surface of the roof. And then we'll just let this sit until that glue dries, probably about uh, probably about an hour for that thing to set up. Um, if you're not happy with the color of that ballast, uh, you can change it. We can, uh, we'll cover how to do a wash uh, when we get to weathering the, uh, the brick texture on the building in just a few minutes.
One final thing we need to do before we uh, start weathering the brick, and that is just to prepare our foundation. So we're going to take this foundation and we're going to paint it uh, a gray or dark charcoal gray just to put the, uh, the paint coat on it. And then uh, we'll cover how to weather it uh, when we get into uh, painting the bricks. So before we dive into washes, I want to take a few seconds and just uh, explain what this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this highly concentrated oil paint and we're going to thin it down with a material called odorless, odorless turpenoid. Um, the only place you're going to find this is at a uh, craft store in the uh, art department and you'll find the oil paints there as well. Uh, what we're going to use is a soft bristled brush and uh, we're basically going to use the turpenoid to thin the oil paints all the way down until they become a wash where they basically just change the depth and slightly change the hue or the color of the surface. Uh, we'll start with the uh, foundation and then we'll move to the uh, Rock Island Freight House and I'll show you how these two materials here will um, essentially transform the surface of the uh, any structure you put it on whether it's uh, accessory or this structure or anything else for that matter. So what we'll do to get started is uh, I just take this uh, Dixie cup and I cut the rim off just so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm just going to pour a little bit of turpenoid in there. But, uh, that should be plenty. And we're going to take the oil paint and uh, put it right out here on the cardboard like so. And just want to show you um, how this turpenoid interacts with the uh, with the oil paints. So you can get something very very dark, or if you thin it down, you can get something very very light. And you can keep going with those shades. the The turpenoid allows you to move the color around, and that may sound strange, but once you start doing it, you'll you'll fully understand what the impact of that really is. Now if you've ever worked with oil paints before you know that uh, oil paints are pretty stubborn in terms of drying. They take a long time to dry. With the turpenoid it actually forces the oil paints to dry a lot faster and so they're dry to the touch um, 20-30 minutes into uh, after the application they're pretty much dry. And what's really nice is because it's oil paint if you have, uh, if you have uh, residue left on top of the let's say you're doing the brick and you're trying to get shadows and you've got a lot of black left on top of the brick you can actually wipe it off um, the oil paint is uh, um, don't know quite how to explain it it's not rock solid in terms of a finish so you can wipe that oil paint right off the top of the uh, the brick surface or really any surface and control the amount of color that is uh, that remains it's uh, really a, a great technique, really lends itself nicely to uh, weathering. And uh, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's start with the foundation and I'll show you how it works. So I've put this, uh, these shop towels down here just to protect the, uh, the video surface. So we're basically going to start by putting some turpenoid on the brush grabbing some oil paint doesn't matter how much we grab um, you definitely want to start with a with a puddle you can always go darker and we're just going to uh, apply it directly to the surface and as you can see we're able to move this color around so let's say we don't uh, we don't want it to be quite this dark so all we simply do is take more turp turpenoid and push that color around. Uh, we can thin it down, we can increase the depth of that color by simply adding more oil paint. Going across, um, back and forth, whatever whatever's comfortable for you, wherever it puts the color where you want it. I'm just going to do this uh, surface here 
and then uh, I'll come back when it's dry and show you what it looks like. Uh, we'll do uh, we'll do something very heavy here, and then we can come back and show you how we can wipe that color off and change the depth of it. And there's no there's no pattern or method to this. You just uh, just have at it. Uh, your eye will tell you what uh, looks good to you, and that's really all that matters. You'll notice that when you have uh, extra terpenoid, you don't really get the brush strokes in it. And uh, some people like it, some people don't. I'm not a fan of, uh, of the brush strokes, personally. So it's been about uh, <clears throat> 15 minutes and uh, this terpenoid has uh, set up the oil paint already. <clears throat> and if you notice, <clears throat> let me see if I can get in here a little bit closer so that you can see the, uh, the difference in the surfaces. So you can see that this side here is a little bit darker than this side here. and. Uh, Let's say we don't want that, that real dark color there. So what we can do is we can just take a shop towel with just a tiny bit of turpenoid on it. Just like that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lightly wipe this surface. And you can see how the color just starts coming up. And uh, this is what I was talking about in terms of being able to control that color on the top surfaces. So what this will end up doing is this will end up leaving the dark, the, uh, the dark black in the, uh, in the cracks and the crevices. Now you need to be careful because we used oil-based paint on the structure and also on the foundation. If you overdo this too much and you wipe this too much, what you're going to start to do is wipe the color off of that MDF. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a fact of using uh, terpenoid. It is a... Um, it is uh, basically distilled turpentine. Um, it's odorless. It does have the strength, uh, not quite as much strength as turpentine, but it's still there. So you just want to lightly wipe the surface to, to take that color off. And then that's it. Um, so you're able to control the, uh, the amount of color after you apply the wash. The best time to do it is while you're applying it. Um, it's best not to go back and wipe it off if you can avoid it. If you can't, you can still do it, but uh, not really ideal. So let's see if we can get uh, we can get this surface back here. This is a little bit dark, so again we can take and wipe this off. Turpenoid on there. And you can see how we can uh, we can reduce that amount of uh, darkness that we applied to it. So that's the basic gist of washing. Um, you can use really any colors you want. The uh, the two colors that I primarily use for washing on structures is an ivory black, and I also use burnt umber, which is a uh, uh, a shade of brown. It works really well for. Um, really all structures it, it looks like uh, weathered rust um, so without uh, without any more delay let's get into our uh, Rock Island freight house and let's show you how to uh, change the depth and uh, uh, add some shadows to uh, the brick surface once you have the awnings mounted uh, and the brass rods are in place uh, we need to paint those brass rods. So what we're going to use is uh, just some acrylic uh, lamp black. This is uh, from the same line of those uh, paints from the craft store. 
and uh, take your brush and go in and just uh, paint these brass rods a black color. Um, the reason we're using acrylic paint on this is uh, twofold. One, it's a lot easier to clean up, and two, uh, we can come back in here later with an oil wash and uh, apply a uh, coat of rust on this that will really, uh, really make those rods look uh, well weathered. So we're going to begin the uh, wash process on the uh, brick surface. Now, your personal preference may be different than ours, and that's fine. Um, what you need to remember is you want to start light and work darker. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, same ivory black uh, oil paint and our turpenoid. And... Uh, we're basically going to thin that uh, thin that oil paint down with the turpenoid, and uh, we want to start at the top and work down. And so we're just going to start up here, put that color in. Now those runs are pretty much what you're looking for. They, you like to get the color to, to run. And you got to remember when it rains, it rains down. And so all of your stains typically drain downward. You're not really looking for any type of uh, horizontal stains per se. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's your model. You can do whatever you please. Um, but you can go back and you can add the color with the turpenoid, uh, darken some spots, leave some spots lighter. Um, this, is, uh, this is the first of two treatments we're going to give to this, uh, this brick surface. We're going to start with this uh, oil wash and then we're going to come back and we're going to do just a little bit of uh, slight dry brush highlights and uh, we'll be done. Now one thing you want to remember with black is black is doing two things for us. One, it's, uh, it's giving us some depth in the, uh, the cracks and the crevices. And the other thing that it's doing for us is it's, it's uh, creating shadows or, um, uh, how do I want to put it, um, fake shadows if you will. You know, we are... Um, we're effectively creating dark spots underneath areas. So places where you want to have a lot of black would be underneath this lintel. Um, that would typically be a shadow. Underneath the awning would be a shadow. And this will simply enhance the, uh, the look of the model once it's uh, positioned on the layout. And that, uh, that dirty, grimy uh, uh, surface, it's really what you're looking for because think about it most industrial buildings uh, they don't get cleaned very regularly so that dust and dirt and grime it uh, it accumulates pretty regularly and sticks around for a while And so that's the basic technique. You can see the difference between uh, the surface that hasn't been, uh, hasn't been washed and the surface that has. Uh, we'll come back when this is dry. Let me, uh, give me a chance to do the uh, entire side of the building. And uh, we'll come back when it's dry and we'll show you uh, uh, what it looks like and what the next step is. So I just completed dry brushing the, uh, the structure. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the brick detail up here pops out quite a bit. Um, again, no, uh, no random pattern, or, or I should say a random pattern, no uh, repeated patterns anywhere. And uh, again, this is just to, uh, just to make the bricks pop. We've got uh, darkness in the, uh, in the crevices to create our shadows. Um, uh, kind of a grimy industrial look to it. 
which is uh, really what we're going for for this structure. Um, feel free to experiment with other colors, uh, yellows, uh, greens, uh, whatever you know, whatever uh, your eye compels you to uh, put on the structure. Um, there really is no wrong way to do this. I'm just uh, trying to explain some of the techniques that we use and how we get our Rock Island Freight houses to uh, look the way they do. Uh, so as you build the kit, you have the opportunity to paint it in the uh, style and manner in which we did. Um, let's go ahead and grab that foundation and uh, put our structure together and get it on the layout. Now that we've completed the wash on uh, the entire structure, you can see how the, uh, the effect is, uh, has taken. Uh, one of the things I did do is I did wash all the windows, um, tones down that almond color, and it gives a little bit of a stain or a dust look to the uh, windows themselves, which is a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool effect. So the last thing that we need to do is just a little bit of minor dry brushing to uh, make some of those, uh, make some of that brick pattern pop. And so I've chosen three acrylic colors. They are uh, Rockwood Red, Burnt Sienna, and Russet. And these are just very subtle uh, tone changes to the, uh, to the base color. So we're gonna start with the uh, Russet because it's the darkest. And uh, same technique as before, put the paint on the brush and then wipe the paint off. And uh, we just want to go in and we just want to do it very subtly. Uh, some of it will cover up the, uh, the wash that we applied, some of it won't. Um, just looking to pull out some details randomly. Not really looking to get uh, as aggressive as we did on the concrete surfaces. And basically want to just uh, spread this around a bit, um, highlighting some bricks, brick texture here and there. Uh, maybe some areas where you've got too heavy a wash, you can cover up that wash with the, uh, with the dry brushing. But basically just going to apply this in, uh, like I said, random locations. Make that brick pop a little more. Um, next, we'll go to the, uh, the Rockwood Red. Now you can do this as, as heavy as you like. Um, I prefer to, to just do a subtle effect so that uh, when people look at the building, they actually see the brick. Uh, they know it's there, but it's not overpowering. So this is the Rockwood Red. So the effect we're trying to achieve overall is uh, just to make that brick pop. And uh, the, uh, the goal here is uh, not to make the brick structure the center of the attention, but more or less the windows and the doors. The, the brick is just basically a supporting role, if you will. Um, and then we'll go in with the burnt sienna. And this is more of an orange tone, so this one will really make the, uh, the bricks pop. And uh, like I said, just, just looking to do it subtly. And it's your model, you can do whatever you want. Um, just trying to give you some hints on how we, uh, how we decorate our stuff here at TW Trainworks and uh, the techniques involved. Uh, you'll notice that I am using an up and down pattern, um, just trying to capture the brick and not the mortar lines. And uh, 
very slowly and very subtly that'll uh, start bringing the brick texture out as you can see here and here um, you want to uh, you want to basically make the, uh, the the colors a little bit random you know a little russet here a little uh, rockwood red there in, in certain places um, if you get uh, if you get a pattern or you get consistency um, it starts looking too unnatural so you're looking for a random pattern with uh, you know no uh, no repetition in it uh, the other thing I did do is I went through and I put the dock bumpers on um, that's just kind of a final touch uh, these are uh, just sprayed flat black you can go ahead and dry brush those with a little bit of neutral gray wouldn't go much higher than that because of the concrete surface you don't want it to blend in you do want them to be pronounced um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and dry brush the foundation off camera and then uh, we'll put the floor in set the uh, set the building down on the foundation and uh, we'll be done so uh, um, if you have any questions about this feel free to email us or give us a call and we'll be happy to walk you through it well it looks like we're about wrapped up we've got the structure uh, placed on the uh, on the foundation that we uh, washed earlier just applied a light dry brush technique to that I've installed the uh, floor that we did in the beginning placed it all down on the foundation about the only thing additional I did here that we didn't cover on the video is I applied a light oil wash of uh, burnt sienna to these brass rods just to uh, give them a little bit of a rusted look the structure itself looks really good to my eye I think at this point we're going to go ahead and place it on the layout uh, we certainly hope that you've uh, picked up a technique or two from this video and uh, that you'll join us on your next kit adventure until then, see you next time.